<laughs> All right, there we are. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Drawing for Tattooers. I'm James. Good Bustow. morning. Hey, we've got uh, we've got Amber Morgan in the house. Hey, Amber, and very special guest. Thanks, Anderton. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Uh, it's really great to meet you. Um, so, uh, thanks everybody for hanging in there. We had some we had technical difficulties, like like we usually do. Like Monday mornings do. <laughs> it's Monday morning. Um, thanks. Uh, you're joining us from the UK. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, northeast of England. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's well. It's so cool to have you. Uh, so in in the U.S., it's nine a.m. It's afternoon. It's like afternoon over there, right? Like, yeah, like one. One. Cool. Cool. Uh, we got Spirit with us. Hey, Spirit. Great to see you. Hey, hey Spirit. Guys. How are you guys doing? We're just saying hi to uh, to thanks Anderton for um, he's our special guest today, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna interview him and. Uh, check out some of his work. Maybe talk. We're gonna talk drawings and stuff. Um, right here on Guy Atchison's reinventing the tattoo network. So uh, anyway, I love your name. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Um, I was checking out your website, and uh, that was one of the one of the options to choose. Did you change? <laughs> did you change your name? I did. Uh, yes. Okay. It's like an old joke that um, have you, I don't know if you'll have heard of it. It's like a British TV show called Look Around You. Have you heard of that? Mm. I haven't. This, like, uh, it's like it's like making fun of uh, some TV shows that they used to make for kids at school. And there's a, a running joke to it where like, you make this new word up on each episode. So the first episode, there's some ants on there, and the ants help the guy with something. And at the, after they help him, he goes, thanks, ants. And it comes up on <laughs> thanks. Like he makes this new word, thunts. And then it's like on the next episode, the ghost of Tchaikovsky is helping. And at the end of the episode, he goes, thanks, Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. And it comes up as if he's teaching this new word. And the, the running joke goes all the way through the whole series. And at the last episode, there's two security guards, and they're both called Hank. And they keep helping, like separately. And eventually they help at the same time. And he says, thanks, Hanks. Thanks. As if thanks is this new word that means thanks, Hanks, you know? And I thought it was hilarious. I wasn't expecting it. And then, because a friend of mine was introduced me to the show. And then I changed my name at the time when I was in the army. Not to this, but I changed my last name to Anderton. And he kept saying, thanks, Anderton. Thanderton. All the time. And then, as I started tattooing, um, a friend of mine, Matt Lappin, he said that Instagram was going to be really good for tattooists. So... I should join it. And I wasn't really bothered. And he's like, no, you, sh you should join it. So I'm like, okay. And I put a stupid name on. I just put this standard thing on there because it was on like a sticker that I used to have on a TV. And um, that was the thing that blew up and I wasn't expecting it to, but that, that like got quite popular. So I was doing, at some point I changed because it used to be John Anderton. At some point I, um, I started taking tattooing more seriously and I changed my Instagram to John Anderton Art because I thought that was the thing to do or something. And then it started feeling like a job and I didn't enjoy it anymore. And it was like, it really felt like hard work and I didn't, because I, I was only doing it for fun ever. Um, so I started doing music at some point. And when I was going on tour, we went on tour in Australia, me and a friend of mine. And it was his show I was supporting. And I said, I want to like draw like a line in the sand of my new music and my old music because my new music was better. And he said, that's a good idea. He did the same thing. What do I want to choose? So I'm like, I, on the first gig, I'm going to come out with this new name. And we went through a few and I thought I should get that energy back of I don't care what people think. I have to just have fun for me, you know, not take it too seriously. So I chose the Thunderton thing. And then, I, you know, I was like thinking, do I call myself Thunderton or do I go to this, you know? And I chose thanks and didn't anyway for it. And then I'm like, last time I changed my name, a lot of things changed in my life. I think there's like a numerology thing or something, if you believe in that. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should do the same again. It'll probably go be, it would be silly to do it. And I thought, I'm going to do that. So over Sydney Harbour Bridge, I changed it by deep pole. One side I was John Anderton. At the other side, I came up with thanks and didn't. Then he was making videos of the, um, 
like on Instagram, you know, for, for the gig. And a lot of people follow him because they were his shows. And he says, I'm not joking you. This man has just changed his name legitimately by Dave Paul. And I'm like, what's up? Um, thanks a little. So then we came on the um, at the show. First time I came out of the gig, I came out. I said, what's up? I said a swear word. The Australians think it's funny. <laughs> I don't know if I could say that on here. Um, my name is Thanks and it actually is because I changed it by Deep Paul this morning. They were just like, yes. <laughs> and it went down really well. So then I changed it on everything. And I have like, you know, that's what I've been doing now. And it's like, I don't know. I think it is changing stuff in my life again. Because it's like, now I've got a silly name again, you know? So. Like, no, I think I think that's brilliant, and uh, and what what comes to mind is this idea of uh, creativity, and yeah. how like creativity, what's you know like inherent within creativity is an act of destruction. You have to destroy okay. something in order to create something new. So you you know you uh, like maybe think of you know ego death too. Like you had to kill the old <laughs> you to become this yeah, new. To be fair, I think I think there will be something like that. I never thought of it like that, but yeah. You yeah. gotta shake things up and make a little chaos in order to create anything. I guess that is the job as artists, isn't it? We take chaos, like paintings and stuff. So there's like a there's like a mess around you, and then there's this beautiful thing that gets created on the canvas. So mm -hmm. you make the mess, or you, you get all the paints out, and that's creating a mess anyway. And you take these bits of paint and put them on the canvas. I guess that's a good point. Yeah, I never thought about like that. I like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, so we're all artists here. You know, I mean, it, like, likely if you're watching us, you're you're interested in art, or you're an artist as well, and so that's probably like one of the one of the hardest sort of things to live up to like making your life a work of art as it were and you might not even be able to like you may not be able to even take that metaphorical step back and see it while you're around <laughs> you know what i mean it's like it's only after the fact you know after your life is over that you can sort of determine like what it was uh, what was going on um and so it's yeah i like that i've never ever thought of it like that but i think it's yeah I guess by creating the mess again, or creating the destruction, as you say, you give yourself new materials to then work with, don't you, I guess? Yes. No, I, I love that. I think that's, uh, um, hmm. and it's so interesting, too, you know, like, our, you know, our name, it signifies who we are. At least, you know, it's how, how not only who, how people identify us, but how we identify ourselves. And so I think taking that ownership of, you know, who you are. To be fair, the first time when I ever changed my name, like it was, um, I, I hated the name. I don't really want to say it on here because I, I did hate it. I'm not that bothered now, but um, it's kind of like I was really shy and nervous. You know, whenever I met new people, it's like, oh, what's your name? And I would always be like, it's John. And they're like, John what? And I'm like, oh, this again. It's like I hated the like having to say the last name every time. And it's like I didn't want to meet people. I didn't want to stand out. I didn't want to do any of this kind of stuff. And I was in the army at the time. And like, so people are saying it, you know, that like this, oh, I'll just say what it is then fine. Cause it's kind of like part of the story, isn't it? It was Nutter. It was John Nutter. And I hated that. Like, cause there was it, like when I was at primary school, there was an advert for, dime, for dime bars came out and Harry Enfield was on it. And there was a bit like, I'm like maybe nine or 10 years old here. And it's like, I remember it now. It's like, it's like, this is everything goes in slow motion and black and white kind of thing when I remember it. It's like, I watched this advert and it's like, he goes, that bloke's a nutter. Oi, nutter. And I'm like, oh my God. Then I go to school the next day and that was it for the next like five years. I'm hearing that all the time. And it's like, I hated it, you know? So like I say, I didn't, I was nervous of meeting people because it was always like this kind of thing. And I'm in the army and I started arguing with like bosses of mine. Like one of them saying like Nutter, he's like Nutter, is that a real name? And I'm like, it's not gonna be in the fucking army's like register if it's not real, is it? And I'm like, I shouldn't be arguing with these people like this. I'm gonna get in trouble, but they kind of can't make me in trouble because it's um, bullying potentially. So you know, but I'm like, I need to change this. So I ch I chose this name Anderton because it began with A, because I wanted it to begin with an A. So I came early on the register, so I'm not already talking by the time it gets to N, and literally like immediately i had confidence like from changing the name i had confidence because it's like what's your name and it's like john anderton and i was like this john anderton character was a different character immediately so it's like i'm going around places and i want to say my name now after years of not wanting to say it i now want to i'm like so at tattoo conventions i'm like um i'm making a fool of myself because like i can do whatever i want with this new character like i i don't care you know it's like something i've created it's like i can decide who he is almost you know 
So it's like then my creativity can come out and I can be like, I can be silly, I can be like whatever, I can be funny, I can just say jokes, I don't care what people think anymore. Um, and then, like I say, years later, when I came to change my name again with the music, it's like, I think there's something I funny about having a weird name again. It's like I went back to a weird name now, but it's my choice this time. So it's kind of like, I have to, uh, maybe like um, it was destiny that at some point I have to make like peace with a, a weird name, you know? And that's where we are now. And this is me new character. And it's like, like... John Anderton was quite driven with things and like always wanting to compete. Thanks, Anderton. It's a little bit more relaxed, but more creative. Like um, I'm a little bit more free kind of thing. You know, it's like I enjoy this much more. I'm not judging anything. I'm not trying to be the best anymore because I used to always try to prove something. Now I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just enjoying myself and making whatever art I want. And sometimes that happens to be tattoos. Sometimes that happens to be paintings. Sometimes it's cartoons or music or and it's just whatever like inspiration uh, takes, you know. I, I follow at the moment. I like that. Yes, yeah, spirit. Took, took a fair bit of time to tap it because I wasn't enjoying it. Um, and when I've came back to it again, I am I enjoyed it again now. Uh, where I did I wasn't I felt like a job like I say. Now I'm actually starting to enjoy it. And it's like from doing these other things, it's like. I've collected inspiration from different places and now I can bring them back to tattooing and I can put them into this art, you know. I've got better skills than I had previously. Because I had a friend, like this is like, it reminds me of, I had a friend who um, was wanting to learn how to, to draw and become like a tattooist. I remember them like, me and my girlfriend at the time wanted to do like playing on computer games or something like that or or play some music things or something. And his friends like wants to join us, but thinks they can't because they should draw or paint because that's how you get better at art, kind of drawing or painting. So they're spending all this time drawing and painting and we're playing on Minecraft or something, you know. <laughs> and it's like, that looks like a waste of time. But how I see it is like, I'm inside of some other artwork. I'm like in there exploring, like, or, you know, you, if you feel like going to the forest instead of painting, you may see this flower that you've never seen before. That's collecting inspiration, like harvesting inspiration. You bring that back and now you can draw that. And no one's ever drawn that before kind of thing. But if you just sit and draw and look at Instagram, you're only drawing what you're seeing on Instagram. You're gonna, your drawings might get better, but they're going to be like the same. Like they're just going to be better versions of themselves. Wow. You never get this other inspiration from a different place. And, that, and it's everywhere. No, this makes drawing sense. inspiration from real life informs tattooing and your art better because you get the feeling, not just like you see a picture. You don't really get the feeling of the experience of seeing it. But yeah. if you're out in the woods or the park or in the city, you get the emotion that comes with witnessing that. And that translates into your art better. Yeah. <laughs> not, it's not even as direct as that. Well, it is. It can be as direct as that. But sometimes it's really like obscure kind of like I'm I, like I'm a little bit of a troll on the internet sometimes. I like to like, I like to make myself laugh really, right? Yes. So I've made, I've made some silly characters on Facebook, like alternate accounts that I can go and like, um, uh, my latest one is a guy called Peter Barley and he, um, I cut, there's a statue, right? Okay. There's a statue in Siam. Uh, that's a world war memorial thing. It's a metal statue. It's rusty. And he's called Tommy. And I was joking saying that the Tommy statue was rusty, that rusty bloke I was calling him. And loads of people take offense at that because they think I'm being disrespectful to the statue. And I'm like, no, I respect the statue. I respect the soldiers. It is rusty, though. And they're like, no, it's not. How dare you? You should show, show some respect. When you insult this statue, you insult the soldiers that died in World War. And I'm like, man, I don't think that's what I'm doing kind of thing. So anyway, at some point, he kept on going, kept on going, pushing it back and forwards. And then at some point, I've made this character called um, Petey Wheaty because he's Peter Barley. I've made Petey Wheaty. I took his image and I've uh, used an AI thing to change the face. So it looks like different than him, you can tell kind of thing. And now I've been going on there and making a lot of posts about things insulting the world. <laughs> I'm just going over the top with what he was doing. And I know it's maybe a weird or maybe it's bullying or something. I don't know if it's bullying because I've hit I didn't know you were supposed to change your name before you were a troll on the internet. I've been doing it under my oh. name. Oh, I do I do that also, but it's quite funny. Like I'm I'm enjoying myself having this like little joke and it's like 
now people are getting annoyed at this Petey Wheaty guy because he keeps talking about World War One or whatever. But I think this kind of stuff, it comes back to, it's it's indirectly affecting the artwork because I'm like joking and I'm, I'm trolling. It's like a practice and a skill almost. And I'm not saying this is a good thing to do. I, I, I definitely know it's like, it's weird and it's, it is a little bit destructive. But it's kind of a skill that I'm practicing anyway. Not that I'm mean to, I just am having fun. But then there was a, a tattoo. I don't know if you saw this tattoo. I don't think I sent it. There was a woman called Melanie. Um, oh, what was it now? Melanie, it Melanie, Phillips. Melanie Phillips. Yes. She did a post saying that tattoos make me feel physically sick. And it, it was in a newspaper and this kind of thing. Um, uh, it got shared around a little bit. I thought immediately, because I'm practicing this trolling thing all the time, it was ready for me to be like, I want to tattoo her face now on someone. I want to tattoo her face on her ass. And I'm going to call it an ass on an ass kind of thing. So I, I got, uh, give it away for free. I got someone to come in. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> give it away for free. Someone came in the, the same day and I managed to tattoo this tattoo and it went quite viral again. And it's like, I think it's the fact that that's my dog. This there one. Go. <laughs> so this went uh, quite viral because you know it's funny but it's like this is inspiration from me doing this other f weird form of art of trolling you know like it, it's a push to say that's an art form but you know if i'm not doing that i don't get to do this tattoo because i don't have the idea on that day like so i feel yeah. like everything comes back to tattooing but a lot of people thought that was funny so my current that girlfriend Natasha, my my girlfriend now, um, when I first met her, we were talking about tattoos. She does a little a few tattoos, and I showed her a few different ones, and she'd seen this one. She'd not seen any more of my work, but she saw this one because, like, even though we're in completely different scenes, she's into, like, traditional tattooing. Even she saw this kind of thing, you know, before uh, we ever a, met. It's a beautiful tattoo. And, <laughs> well, uh, I know, I, Yeah, it's really well done, but I think also... Um, you know, you're you're talking about this trolling. It's a it's a it's a form of uh, it's a form of power, right? And you were standing up against you know like an ideology that you you disagreed with, yeah. Right? I you know I tried to um, I tried to read the the article that uh, Melanie Phillips wrote just to kind of get a little bit of background and stuff. And it was behind a paywall. I didn't get a chance to read it. Right. But again, it's sort of like this, uh, you know, there's there's a real uh, judgmental quality to the, you know, the vibe. <laughs> and uh, it just sort of, a, you know, like a real lack of understanding about, you know, uh, yeah. again, sort of, you know, it seemed like she was equating like the practice or the, you know, or the, of uh, you know, acquiring tattoos or collecting them, uh, you know, with this, this sort of godless world you know, that we, you know, like a, a religion free kind of, uh, you know, space that we find ourselves in in contemporary culture. And, um, and like, tattoos are older than religion. Totally. But I'm just saying like, uh, you know, she may very well have a point, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong. <laughs> you know well, what that, I mean? This is and, the funny, funny part about it. It's like, uh, yeah. there is things that I agree with, you know, sure. like I'm not taking offense at this quote. I know that a lot of people would have took offense at it, but I don't. I, I, I'm not. I'm not bothered what she thinks. It's it's cool. Like I could have a normal conversation with her for sure. Like I'd get on with her. No judgment at all for that. Everyone has their own view, and they may or may not be right or, or wrong. But this is why I think because I've got no judgment about it, I just immediately go to whatever the funniest part is. That's what I'm interested in. You know. Yes. No. I think that makes all the sense in the world. And there's a sort of a. Uh, um... I think it, 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 I guess I would equate it to like a, uh, you know, shit testing. You know what I mean? Like, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like how triggered, you know, like she, obviously there was a, there was a aspect of this, you know, sort of coming out with this stance that was meant to trigger tattooed people. Yeah, right? of course. So here you go. How triggered and then this is you meant to trigger her and then yeah. <laughs> those people also, it's a game, you know? <laughs> Yeah, like she it. will have seen it. I, like, there's no doubt she will sure. have seen it. I never heard anything, but like, so many people were tagging her in it and sending it to her and stuff, you know. So, like, yeah, ideally, I... she would think it's funny, you know. That would be my yeah. favorite like reaction. Yes. <laughs> well, all right. So, what's you know, I think what's really nice is that like, uh, it, there's a real sense of humor here. Um, and it almost, uh, it like it, it almost sort of like 
takes us out of like the you know the sort of the this level of artistry that you that you do bring to the work so uh i think on this note i'd, I'd really like to, to to dig in and look at some of your other tattoos if that's all right yeah yeah um, so let me see if i can uh, hope hopefully uh y'all it'll be able to follow right all right so why don't we just uh we'll just kind of start we'll go up we'll go up from here um uh, this beautiful. this was an exercise in okay. um uh what well, where did it come from now do you know jason butcher i'm sure you have heard of him sure jason's a good friend of mine and me and jason used to talk a lot at tattoo conventions about art and and tattooing and stuff and one conversation we had was um people saying that that's easy anyone could do it you've just got to take longer mm. you know like like the difference between like being able to do like something really rough or something really um really accurate kind of thing realistic it's like basically just time there's knowledge and technique obviously but like um if you have like the theory is that if you've got enough time anyone could do anything and whether that's true or not, like I thought that doing things like extra realistic was kind of like, like I thought I could do it if I just spent the extra time because I like paintings to look like paintings. But this was an exercise in seeing how far I could push the realism to see if I could get it like really realistic if I wanted to. And it's not perfect, you know, like it still does look like a painting and, I, and I'm happy with that kind of look. Like that's probably my favorite point to take it to currently is that. Like I, for me, I don't know if I would have the, I don't know, the want maybe even to take it extra realistic from there because I like them to still look like paintings. But it was an exercise in the point because Jason's like saying, well, if, you, if you're not willing to spend the extra time to do it, then technically you can't do it then because you need that willingness to take the extra time to do it. So you can't say that anyone could do that if you're not willing to spend the time. So this was an exercise in trying to spend the time to make it like more realistic and then i did like a painting uh, of my brother i think it might be on there. i'm not sure if it's or not it's this one that's just in the background here um that was is again it, like another exercise one? in that huh? is it uh is it at the top was it is it the one i with, don't know uh, if it's on there or not i'm not sure okay sorry everybody i'm scrolling <laughs> just but i'm <laughs> you know it's there, there is another painting i remember seeing and it was up here uh this one. Oh yes yeah so that's it before varnish, I think. Okay. But like again, like it's this eye. That's the last thing I did on it, and that one I, I was spending the extra time because we're just talking, you know. Um, that was like that's probably the best bit of painting I've done so far, and it's like now I'm thinking, do I want to make the nose better in the mouth because this this thing's off with the rest of it, and the other eye, you know, like the you can see the the rim of the the glasses is thicker than it is on this side there's like things i could change to make better i i don't think i'm going to though because i'm happy with the painting where it is and i would prefer to use those things on the next one i do because i think if you try and make you're trying to go perfect you never finish things you know so i'm going to call this one finished now but try and do that on the next one but i like taking it to that like extra level i think at the moment because this is a realist realism in tattoos. It's like um, I always found it like relatively easy. I know it can always be better, but it impresses people a lot to see that kind of stuff because they can relate to it because they see realistic stuff all the time. I always respected like more cartoony things and stuff more because I couldn't do that. But in painting, it's like I've been doing more of the realistic stuff when I've been doing it because again, it's easy. You're just copying basically. All you've got to do is put the paint in the right place, and then it looks like the <laughs> the thing. I know that sounds oversimplified, but no, it's like just to, uh, say that again. Yeah, well, I was going to mention though. It's like uh, there's always this. Um, you're always interpreting in some way. Also, um, it's kind of going. There's a you are a filter, right? Like you're viewing, uh, you know, the appearance of something, and you're trying to translate that into a media, so paint or tattoo for instance um and there's a certain like in order for it to to achieve that level of likeness and appearance there's an order of operations that you would have to follow and it seems very logical like this sort of like i'm looking at the ear like the way that it's blocked in right there mm -hmm. you know a few more uh, like 
steps as it were like towards the light maybe even maybe even pushing darker or maybe warmer or something um and it would again it would like it would continue to to become more and more alive with appearance but right here you really captured like like the light like this you know the the edge of the glasses this little hinge and then the you know the the sort of spectral light right on the eye it tells us a story like lights over here it's shining in and it, mm -hmm. you know it's, the eyeball is wet the metal is very shiny this sort of a thing uh and i you know so i guess i i guess i think that like if it comes to you in this natural way uh yeah yeah if it comes to you in this natural way that's uh i think you're you know again you're 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 interpreting this experience for other people. Like, I guess to Amber's point, you're, you know, you're really making something that is very, uh, much more interesting, I suppose, than just, mm. you know. Uh, well, that is the thing that people say, like just the hyper-realism is boring. Like a lot of people say that, like just take a photograph if you want to do that. And, right. and I think that's downplaying it massively because it's like, it's like, um, like they de the people who say that definitely couldn't do it. And they can't mm -hmm. take themselves like the time to actually do that. It's it's silly to say that almost, you know. But I kind of agree in the, at the same time a little bit. I do like I say I like it to look like a patient still. And I guess inherently that means there must be some mistakes in order for it to look like a patent. Because if there was no mistakes and it was perfect, it wouldn't look like a patent anymore, it would look like a photograph. And that's really impressive. And I I understand like the patience it takes to get that. But as a viewer, for me, it's more interesting to see brush strokes and and mistakes yes. it's like to, it's it's almost like it's it's more interesting whether it's better or not that's different that's subjective i guess it's more interesting for me to say that like someone who could do this chose not to you know i think that's what i like about it right. or that like they're so good like jeff gorgway for instance he like taught me a lot of things about painting um like look, i've got one of jeff's paintings downstairs in the studio it's of a unicycle and when you look at it really close, it's like really rough, like um, paint strokes. When you look at it from like um, maybe 25 feet away or something, it looks like a photograph. And that's what I love. That's the ideal for me for, for a painting. It's like because it's like it shows that he has a, a mastery of this, like the understanding of light source and color and stuff like this and shape. But when you get up close, it's like he's applied it so like loosely almost. It's like I, I love that kind of thing in paintings. What I love about Monet. Right, okay. Wonderful. Uh, let's uh, let's check out some other stuff. So let's look at a tattoo. Um, this was the first one that comes up, mm -hmm. so we'll check it out. That's only the first one that comes up because I got blocked the other day for posting my latest tattoo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know we can't show that one on here. But. Right? You just, uh, yeah, you you shared that one with me. It is, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great tattoo. Um, it's an elephant. You'll be allowed to show it. You put it on. It's using a piece Twitter of not me cleverly. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this one. So this one looks like uh, it looks like you're reworking some areas like kind of covering up in the maybe in the process of it's just a straight cover up like this guy has been tattooed by a lot of different people he's been tattooed for years years and years ago he got tattooed by philip Liu and tom renshaw and i think maybe bob terrell but he knows a lot of these people he was like he was going and collecting tattoos when them guys were like the big names kind of thing and for for years he's commented on my things whenever i have a space He's like, oh, I would definitely come if I had if I had um, the skin, and he just has said that on like almost every post that I've put like that for years. And then I don't know what it was, um, but for some reason he's decided to actually just come and get some cover ups to see if we see what we can do. And he's open to what we can what we can achieve. Will you close it and go on the one before that? Yes, definitely. Uh, and then I also want to you know want to put up here our uh, there's the link. So uh, even if you if you want to go right here to thanks is Instagram, you can scan the QR code and uh, it'll, it'll take you right there. All right. So which one did you want to go to? Just directly below us. 
okay this so this is like the next uh oh this is the first that's stage the first session on it yeah okay. and he's he's open to see what we can achieve you know so he's he's fine to do like five sessions on it if we have to or or whatever because i wanted to do this first session a load of heavy black and then i wanted to do white in the areas that i eventually want lighter on on another part of his arm on the last session i didn't take photos we're doing a rose um again trying to cover up and i've went over some areas just with solid white to see how that heals over the next few sessions i'm going to start adding color over the top of the white to see like uh, how effective it is and i think we're going to be able to get it to look like it was never a cover-up like honestly because that like now go back to the blue one again sure because this is how it looked after the first session on this one we've went back over the black in the in the mouth is that like instagram thing going to be over there for everyone i can uh yeah i can zoom in a bit so like on the mouth like if you zoom in on the teeth a little bit that's like two layers of white on the teeth now with some little blends and stuff coming in. The black in the mouth has had two layers now. And then the blue is just like the one layer. But I can see already that some bits are going to come back through the blue. And I think there will be still some bits that come through the teeth as well. So we're going to do the experiment again on the next session. I'm going to go back over the teeth. I'm going to go back over some bits of black that I need to. And we're just going to see how far we can take it with a um, with a cover-up. Because he, like I say, he's like um he's up for spending the time and the money luckily to see how far we can get and the good thing about doing it like this is i can i can adjust things like i don't like a bit on the nose so on the next session i'm going to carve that kind of back a little bit but nice i, I um, think we're fortunate to have customers who have let me do this kind of thing yeah there was a big like a big chest piece in a similar kind of style that i did in black and gray a long time ago now but like 2012 or 13 maybe maybe 14 that was going quite viral um and that guy was like he just wants this amazing tattoo and he's like willing to spend however much it takes as much time as we want and there's some parts of him like on his nipples we went black over the nipples and like big heavy black on the belly and stuff and the nipples like some of them uh, one of them we went over five times to get it to be solid black you know but they are solid black. Now, 10 years later, they're still solid black. Like, it's really good looking tattoo still. And because I was doing experiments on him, and I enjoy doing experiments. And what I discovered that is you can pack black as solid as you want. And then on the next session, if you add black over the top again, that two layer bit will always stay blacker than the other la the other bit. That's what it, like, it seemed like to me. So that would then, in theory, mean if you want a solid area black, do it twice, it's going to be darker. Do it three times, it's going to be like diminishing returns, obviously, but you will eventually get it um, as dark as it can be. The funny uh, thing this, about it's the, pretty, the this is pretty dark in here. But that's um, fresh black over solid black already. Yeah. I was going to say the funny has, thing about the nipples really... on the other guy's tattoo is. One of them we did, I took him to a tattoo convention because I thought uh -huh. if the tattoo already looks cool, if I take him and do another session of it at the show, that's going to be cool for the crowd, right? And sure. like immediately, as soon as he took his shirt off, we had like a queue of people around. So then I'm going over some parts, touching up, adding little details. And I went over one of his nipples and the crowd's like, oh my God, look at this, all the <laughs> video and his stuff. Then when the crowd like dissipated and was re uh, replaced by another crowd kind of thing, I remember saying like, um, I'm like, Chris, I'm going to go over your other nipple now, okay? And he's like, I know, mate. And I'm like, <laughs> it doesn't need doing either. He's like, I know. <laughs> so we did it like the fifth time for no re just the reason to show off to the crowd. But like, it went down really well, though. So, And Amazing. he's up for that. Amazing. Well, I mean, I think there's something interesting about what you were saying with the, um, you know, when you were looking at Jeff Gogoy's painting and, you know, you, you know, you, you get up close to it and then you can see the marks, right? You can see the brush strokes. It looks, mm -hmm. you know, there's like, there are some areas that are, there's difference, but you take a step back and it's even more interesting, you know, than if it were, uh, I guess, I don't know. It's easy. I think to get so hung up on a, on a spot, but, but I like what you said that there's this, uh, you know, a certain amount of saturation that you can achieve. And then there's going to be a diminishing return. Um, and so finding that limit is is going to be uh, so valuable, probably for you know for like mm. achieving the stuff you really want. Like, and also, I, I this is not the best tattoo I've ever done or anything. You know, I'm just trying to see what we can do. It's more an experiment than anything. Yeah, 
but like, no, I, I appreciate doing that. It's, it's fun to do that kind of stuff. No, thank you for, yeah, thank you for letting us check it out. Let's check out one that, one of your faves. Which one would you, uh, which one would you like to speak about? Um, I don't know. Keep scrolling down and I'll, I'll pick it up. You got it. But anyway, right in the yeah. middle right there. Oops, this one? The, the, no, the painting above. Ah, this guy. Yes. This is like the start of this painting behind me. I don't know if you can really see it properly on this camera. Uh, I can, uh, yeah, hold on a second. I can actually, I should be able to maximize you. Yeah. There you go. It's yes. Wow. Oh, cool. It's a scene from my cartoon. Um, and I was doing some paintings in the cartoon style. I think there was a clip further down. I can be not on full screen again now. That's enough. No, uh, you know what? Um, uh, I really, uh, I was thinking about, you know, we should show your cartoon. Do you want to, do you want to show it now? Um, I don't know. Like, what's that like for language on here? I think it's all right. <laughs> the, the cartoon's quite long. So it's like, I don't know if you could show the whole thing. I think that would be too long to be fair. Okay. All right. So, um, well, here, let's, let's, uh, let's do this. Um, let me zoom out of this for for a second. Uh, we'll uh, we'll come back and check out some more tattoos in just a moment. But uh, what we can do is uh, let's see. What I can do is why don't we just uh, we'll we'll show it for a for a you know for a brief well, time. You could go to that this moment in in it and say that. Okay. All right. Yes. I can do that. I can do that actually. Well, so while yeah, while I'm getting it all queued up, um, Amber, did you have any questions for thanks? Um, I don't know about questions, but. <clears throat> On the topic of changing your name, I've had a lot of people try to get me to change my name. Right. Why? Because they've been going by that name. Well, they've been going by your name. Yes. Not knowing that I exist. <laughs> but right, then, yeah. I mean, this goes back to MySpace. Having people email me and telling me to stop using that name. I'm like, is it your name? They're like, well, no, not legally. I'm like, then you have no grounds. Oh my God. Well, I was like, do you have it trademarked name? or copyrighted? No. What is the name? Amber Morgate. Oh, they're just like your actual name. They're just trying to be like, yeah. Stop they're, they're like, well, the re real Amber Morgate, please stand up. And I'm like, no, I'm busy. Yeah, so that, it finally I, stopped after after like three years of being on Facebook and them realizing I had all the Amber Morgan domains. Okay. <laughs> Don't hate the They're player. Like, oh, right? wait, hate the game. you've got is it this, all. How do you think, uh, thanks, is this is this about right where you were? Uh... Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what that scene is. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I just went to check uh, to see, I've got a guitar that I painted. I think it's downstairs though, so I'll leave it for now. But... It was in this kind of style. I was painting in this kind of style with acrylic. It's like solid colors, you know, and, and stuff. And I enjoyed it, but it's kind of um, harder, I think, than doing it realistic-ish. So what I, what I tried with this painting was to just do something in this, this kind of style, but realistic. What would it look like if it was realistic? And that's what that was, like an exercise in that. I'm not well, finished yet, uh, this is, so, so this, is your, this is your cartoon... You made a feature length cartoon um, and uh, you can click the link. It's at the top. It's pinned to the top of your Instagram page. Uh, I got a chance to watch it and uh, it's, it's hilarious. It's, it's really, uh, I think it would, would fit in perfectly with like adult swim or something of that nature. And so um, anyways, uh, why don't we, we can just play We can play a few moments of it. Um, Where can we so play from? Would you, uh, would you, would you mind kind of? You can catch us up. Like, so what's, what are we, uh, what are we gonna watch here? What's happened? What's the story so far? So this is the first episode. Like, basically, they are two chavs, and I don't know if you have chavs there. I don't know what the equivalent of chavs would be in America. Buddies, friends. Like, like what they do, they, they, they're the kind of people who, they're stuck in the '90s kind of thing. 
They like smoking weed, smoking tack, maybe taking drugs. Uh, they would be like at our school, like the popular kids. But then I don't know, maybe not the popular kids. They're the naughty kids. Um, right. <laughs> these are the ones who would like disrupt the class. They would be in the lower classes, kind of at school. Like they would be in, the, you know, like the you juvenile delinquents. Huh? We yes, call yeah, them yeah, juvenile delinquents. delinquents over here. Yeah, they can be like that. They wear tracksuits. They um, they like fast cars. They make a noise on the night. They smash bottles and this kind of thing. Although I'm not having these be as naughty as that, but these are old chavs now, right? So they they basically sit in the shed, smoking weed and talking shit. That's that's their life, kind of thing. Smoking and drinking and talking, and taking the taking the piss out of each other and their mates and that kind of thing. So this episode is like the introduction to them, really, because I've had this idea for a long time. Because my brother used to do that. Like he used to just every day I'd phone him, he'd be in the shed smoking weed and drinking and joking on with his mates and it's like you know on about practicing like an art form like this banter back and forth like it, it is an art form that these guys practice every day without realizing they don't know it's necessarily an art form but like the jokes were like um like um it starts off with one of them saying he's climbed mount everest and he's talking about like how and one of them's like no you fucking haven't man and he's like i fucking have like and he's like my evidence is this sort of it and it's like their mate comes in, they say a lot to him, and he's like, um, he's just here, listen to this. He says he's just climbing Mount Everest. He's like, you couldn't even fucking climb into bed, you kind of thing, you know? It's that like really quick back and forth thing. I wanted to catch that in some kind of show, but I always visualized it being like live action. But I don't know if you've discovered this as an artist, getting other people to join in on your art is really, really hard. Yeah. Like people are just notoriously unreliable with almost everything. So eventually one of my customers was um, showing me that there was a program that I could use to make animations. So I'm like, okay, this was my practice for animation kind of thing. Um, uh, well, yeah, I appreciate the, I mean, there, it's, it is funny. Um, and I also, I get the, the, I get the critique as well that, you know, that you really, you know, it's really coming across. Um, but of course, like, you know, there's a certain, uh, you know, there's a sort of admiration in a certain way as well. So I, I uh, for these, for these characters, right, you, you are, you know, you are like sort of celebrating them in a certain way, which I yeah, think is Yeah, yeah, nice. because I've, I've got a yeah. friend who like the, the red one, he's called Carl. My friend is called Carl Smith. And this character is called Carl Spliff. <laughs> and he's like, he's inspired by, by Carl. He's not, he yeah. isn't Carl, but he's inspired by him. And it's like. He's my, he's my favorite chav. <laughs> and normally people wouldn't like chavs, but like he he's funny, you know, like I I appreciate the the chavness, I guess. So um, this is kind of like a celebration of of that at the same time. So these two these two chaffs have uh they they smoke weed all day, but they end up going to the woods and and get a bag of magic mushrooms. And so yes. now they're uh so now they're experiencing the effects of eating some mushrooms. So oh, now they're tripping watch. balls. Yeah, the tripping balls. Let's watch for just a moment because it's, a it's an excellent cartoon. Just for a minute. Back and I think you've pissed yourself. Huh. Oh. Well, I've definitely pissed myself, so I'm going to have to gnash like, season like, a bit. You're missing like, the, the point I'll of it, I guess. Later. Please go back a little bit, I think. Oh, go back a little bit. <laughs> just That's the end of it. Baby. I recognize that sound. Just a tiny bit. So he's. Well, he I'll go up, to maybe uh, just a little right. bit further forward. So what are you always like? Well, I'm a fucking woodlouse, eh? And this is my mate Ant. He's an <laughs> ant, but he's also a called ant. And what do they call you like? Fucking dick. <laughs> they do, actually. Oh. So what are you staying in here like? Fucking getting ready to rumble or what? Well, I just wouldn't and louts admit, you know. Aye? Aye. Nice one. Are you, mate? Are you ready to come back yet? Like, I need a shit. <laughs> And I think you've pissed yourself. <laughs> oh. Well, I've definitely pissed myself, so I'm going to have to nosh lad season a bit. I'll see you later. <coughs> oh, so anyway, then I met fucking PJ and Duncan. <laughs> did they make you watch them wreck the mic? Haha, <laughs> they did, I. Really? Psych. <laughs> fucking daft cunts, them too, like. Haha, <laughs> they are, like.
Hey, which one would you rather slap? I don't know, I mean, probably the little one. Oh, he looks a proper angry cunt, that one, like. Oh, he does, like. You don't see it on the telly, but I bet he is. Oh, he probably fucking slaps his lass. Or his lad. <laughs> Actually, had a fight with a tall one once. Aye. Oh, that's why his forehead's so big. Fucking kicked his fringe off, didn't I? <laughs> Hey, where's Terry at anyway? I didn't know, mate. I think we might have left him down the day in like. This is like building in the next episode now. Um, (coughs) Very funny. Yeah, it's funny. And uh, so, again, and I like like what you were saying, how it's, um, it takes more imagination to come up with this. I mean, like, again, there's a technical prowess a technical mastery you have to have to do the photorealistic stuff mm-hmm. which of course you demonstrated you know you do the painting and, and your tattoos as well but there's something more imaginative and uh more i'm gonna say poetic about well i think this is what i was on about earlier on about collecting the inspiration like this is collected inspiration now manifested in an art form you know it's like i've met these guys like each one of the people in here they're, they're real people then they're, they're not they're not like not each character. No one character is one person. Like each character could be like five different people as a little trait, you know, that I've built into these characters, kind of thing. But it's like I could never do that if I never met if I never met those characters or experienced these things, you know. But that's what I kind of because it's like I, again with the inspiration, I'll be maybe lying in bed or something, and it's like I have this idea just popping into my head of like a conversation that they might have, because it starts with a conversation about climbing Mount Everest, and that was the first thing I ever wrote down. Um, about the, this argument about no, you have, no, you fucking haven't climbed Mount Everest. I fucking have, like, and it's like I even thought out one of the guys' arms and refroze it because it was pointing the way, pointing the wrong way, because they own about like they use bodies as markers and all that kind of thing. So that was like a joke that There's I like. There's over 120 like, bodies on Mount Everest. Is there really? Yep. Um, because that's the introduction to the episode. Is like I apparently they use markers, uh, bodies as markers, so you know which way you're going and all that. I fucking climbed Mount Everest, man. And it's like, it goes on like that. But I had this idea and it's like, how do I make it? But then like some random day, I'll have another idea about another conversation and I just tend to write them down on my phone now. And then it's like, I'm now working three episodes ahead in my head because I've got these ideas that I want to do. But I'm trying to like complete them and put them on. So I've got the next episode is in progress now. And I think I burnt out on it a little bit because... The first episode, how I did it was, it was just to see if I could. So I made I made the character, then I wanted to see if I could move the character around. And I'm like, okay, I can. So now I spent like four hours drawing a background, put that on, then I'm moving the character in the background. And I'm like, okay. Then I record some, I write the script, I record the, the voices, then I animate it to that. Then I've got a finished scene and I'm like, cool, I love it. I want to do, I want to see more. And the story progressed like that. With this next episode, because now I know how to do everything, what I've done is I've drawn all the backgrounds for the whole thing. And the backgrounds, some of the backgrounds, like there's a bit where they're walking through the forest. That's like took four days to draw that because it's like a long thing. A normal like one background like this might take a full day or two days, depending on how long I'm spending on it, like eight hours or 12 hours, something. Because I want to put all the little details in and I want them to be the same like level of quality, if you like. Um, so I've done all the backgrounds. I've done all of the characters. I've done all of the objects that they need i've wrote all of the script for the whole episode and then i'm like halfway through recording the audio for it the dialogue and then i'm like burnt out and i think what's happened is on um the previous one i'm I'm doing a section and then i get to see the product and i'm laughing at it i'm I'm enjoying watching it and it gives me like that drive to do the next bit and i'm seeing that and i'm like oh this is amazing but now i've done all this work but with no product actually exists still i've just got like material almost you know so i say i need to actually start animating them now so i can see them as finished things i think and that'll give me the drive back because when i'm listening back to the the things i'm i am laughing myself you know i i do think it's funny also it's like the kind of thing i would love to watch but it's a long process the first episode took like nine months to make altogether and this one i'm like maybe five or six months in now but I've had, I have had like a bit of a break, like a month break or something so far. But I, I am ready to get back to it because I, I want to see it. I want to find out what happens to the characters and stuff, you know. Because yes. they're evolving for me also. And this, to be honest, this goes into tattooing. I know like a lot of people like to do um, full finished drawings before they start their tattoo. 
Personally, mm. for me, I don't. I, I hate doing that because when I've done that, it feels like I'm copying. Like when I've done when I do realistic stuff, I, I can do it. Um, uh, decent enough. I don't really enjoy that because I'm kind of looking to the reference and back to the tattoo like this all day. And I don't enjoy that. I like working from my head and creating in the moment. So I prefer doing a really, really rough sketch and refining it on the skin. People can work that way. This is what I prefer to No, that's, that's important. And I think uh, uh, there's a certain amount of like experience, like go actually going through it, like finishing up drawings and the like, you know, making work. Uh, that could that allow you to sort of be in that state of flow where you're working mm -hmm. in the moment, you know, you're uh, um, you're able to to make new discoveries, right? So it's not you're not just copying your you know your after your. Own I, I want to know what it looks like finished, also. Yeah, and, and like that's part of me, like doing it. If I if I already mm -hmm. know what it looks like finished, I'm like I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of the exciting yeah. part's already over now, and now I'm just creating it again for someone. It's like that's not fun. But the actual like experiment, I really like to experiment. I've enjoyed that a lot with tattooing, to experiment and see what I can get away with. I'll see what I can do. And I have failed like, doing this also. This time I've got something to draw something on, and I've like, I just, it won't work today. And I'm like, sorry, mate. Like, I'll not charge you or whatever. I'll give you like the next second for half price or something because it's my fault. Like, I have had that happen a couple of times. Well, not loads, but, but I think take those kind of risks. Like, sometimes you, you win also. Nice. Uh, well, I wanted to open up, you know, questions. So if you're watching us live, you know, please feel free. Send your questions to the chat you're wherever great. you're watching us from. And uh, yeah, bring it up, man. oh, we've got Spirit. Hey, Spirit, I'm gonna. Uh, if you're, if you have a, uh, if you had anything to add, Spirit, would love to, love to hear from you. It's great to see you, Spirit. Hey, what's up? Welcome back again. <laughs> yeah, I have issues uh, with connecting with my, my phone sometimes, so I have to hop on the laptop. I'll be right, right back, though. I got to go get my wife some grapes. Of course. No, that's that's perfect. Uh, so, yeah, when you come back. Um, so, so far, we've had a chance to, you know, to look at your, a, a lot of your work. Um, I guess I'm curious about what do you have coming up? What are some, do you have any, uh, upcoming events that you would like to, uh, to share with us? Anything that's, um, that you want people, you know, where can we, can we meet up? What's up? Um, I've only got one more convention booked so far, which is in, um, Newcastle at the end of the month. I think it's like, it's called big North Newcastle in the UK. Um, 28th or 9th, something like that. I'm, I'm at that show. That's all I've really got planned, honestly. I know Gabe sends me an invite to the Paradise thing about every day, <laughs> at least twice, <laughs> something like that. I, I want to come back over to that, but it's like, um, it's, I don't know about like money wise. It's like, it's not the easiest thing to get sorted at the moment, you know, because I took some time off tattooing uh, because I wasn't enjoying it. And I think some customers thought I wasn't doing it at all and have went other places now. So it's like I'm kind of building the clientele back up again. So I have a fair bit of spaces at the moment, which is um, it's good because I get some time to do things I want to do, but I don't have like the disposable money that I used to have when I was like busy all the time either, you know? <laughs> that's well, the way I did it all the no, trade uh, Well, it would be awesome, you know, if you get a chance to, to come out to Paradise. Uh, we'll definitely. We'll hype, hype up your appearance. Um, Spirit, you're back. What, uh, hey, which grapes did you get? That? The green ones or the like purple ones? Oh, I got the purple ones. Okay. Seedless. I, I'm sitting here looking at your work, man, and uh, I really love it. It's really, Jeez. really beautiful stuff. <laughs> um. Thank you. I like how you just kind of go go easily from neo traditional to to realism. It's really really beautiful. And you're, I think this you're, is part you're, of you're, like. Go ahead. I think this is part of my character in general. It's like uh, 
I love classical music, but I also love metal and I also love like punk music kind of thing. Or if I'm doing paintings, I like to go to cartoon things, then to realistic. Then I like to go to, you know, it's like, uh, like star sign wise, I'm a Libra. So it's kind of like, I always tip one way you or the other. You've got the other. scales going. Huh? You've got the scales going. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's good to just tip one way sometimes it's good to like to balance them kind of thing i think the ultimate goal is probably balance but yeah uh i've been told at a convention that me uh portfolio looks like a studio's portfolio rather than a one person's one and i think that may be detrimental honestly to me um like the reach because people want to look the guys who want to look at evil skulls, they only want to look at evil skulls. And then I do a nice cartoon or a rose or something. It's like, who's this? I didn't follow this guy. Hmm. <laughs> Whatever. Right. I think that's why I ended up tattooing like a lot of tattooists because they they can see past that stuff. Yeah. But customer wise, they tend to like have because people. I guess people aren't really going on Instagram or this to choose. Uh, to choose tattooists anymore, are we? I think once upon a time they were, but now I don't think they are. Now I think they're just going for entertainment, just to look, and that's it. You don't get as many bookings from it as you used to, kind of thing. Oh, that's like, I didn't, I didn't do that skull. I added the jaw to it and went over some parts. But still, it's like, it's pretty seamless. Uh, Vermissimilitude is <laughs> what I would, you know what I mean? Like, where does you, where do you end well, and where does the I other am, one begin? I kind of like, uh, that's a thing I've enjoyed for a long time, you know, to be fair. Like, I've I've had some sleep, like, I've, I've been, so there was, there was a guy who wanted to get tattooed by me at London Convention, and he wanted me to just do whatever, like, one piece in one corner of his back, and he's got all these other uh, styles on there. And yeah. I declined it because I didn't think it was going to look very good. Like he, there was a guy called James Tex, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. He he done a uh, a piece on this guy's leg, and he wanted me to add something to the foot. And it's like, what he wanted on the foot was going to take away from James's piece. And I'm like, I don't want to add to this because I don't I don't want to make James's piece look less good. You need something that like helps with that style, and what you're asking me to do isn't going to work. So I said no to it anyway. But. I've had some things where I like both styles and I'm working in between. So instead of me just doing whatever I want, what I've noticed a lot of tattooists seem to do, I'm trying to match something between both styles. So then it looks like it was supposed to be there. I, I feel like that's your job really as a, as a tattoo artist. Like if, if you're just an artist and you're doing it on a canvas and the canvas is by itself, then it doesn't matter. But on a body, when like someone's got like some Neo tried on the bottom of the arm and something realistic on the top, it's kind of like, it already doesn't match. And they're saying, do whatever you want. It's like, well, I want your arm to look good for you. So I'm going to do something that like works with both. So I kind of enjoy that. I, I like to uh, add to things. I like to go over some things and that. Uh, yeah, D Guy Atchison talks about this in quite a bit as far as how you would, uh, um, you know, when you're, you are adding to someone's collection, right? Mm -hmm. it, and it's this, basically the same philosophy that you you were just talking about. Like, how do you accentuate it right working to you know kind of working together with what's there i mean some people have a really eclectic mix you know as far as like they have all sorts like of if, it, if it's all mental and eclectic then it doesn't really matter does it i guess right. but like yeah. if 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 you can make it look like it's one thing then i think it's like i don't know i like the challenge of that like you see that art fusion thing that people sometimes do or they used to do like at tattoo conventions when they're just painting canvases or something and then mm -hmm. they're like swapping swapping around or like when people send canvases to each other and stuff a lot of the time it's like this guy does this bit over here this guy does this bit over here and everyone's kind of scared to touch each other's work right. but i think it's like it looks way better like you've got an opportunity there to make this piece that couldn't exist without both of you or all three of you or however many people like because it doesn't look as good when it's just two different styles that are like sitting at the opposite side of the canvas it looks amazing when it's like this this third style that neither could do that's kind of what i like well, you have a lot of art. So one thing that, that does come up, and sometimes it's hard to identify within our own work, like what it is that we're, uh, you know, we're drawn to. But certainly there's a lot of uh, flowers, floral stuff um, that you, like, you post it. So um, it is, it's very, it's very beautiful uh, as well. And it's not only yeah. just, you know, some of it's like, uh, there's some that, that seem more feminine and there's others that are, they're, they're very masculine, like the, 
uh, maybe that cheetah. I don't know who that was on, but it's, it certainly has more of an aggressive type of uh, vibe to it. And what was interesting, I think, was sort of thinking about the painting that we saw earlier where you had that, you know, the really like, beautifully rendered eye there wasn't a tattoo, right? There is this, uh, you know, this sort of attention to detail and uh, understanding, you know, of the anatomy. So that way you can achieve the, um, the depth as it were. Uh, and it's more than just copying, I believe. Like there's, you know, I think there's a, uh, just like you said, you know, there's, there's understanding. And then of course, uh, like the patience that it would take mm. to, to do something like this. Um, what, how do, I guess I want to I want to talk a little bit about like the longevity, um, and so uh, how do you feel about a piece like this? It's sort of longevity. It's prospects for being you know like so beautiful for years to come. Um, well, I'm trying to like bump the contrast up as much as I can, like get away with and still have it look good, it, to try and combat that, but the the things without outlines do tend to like lose the edges a little bit. So I like to add outlines, but then at the same time, outlines tend to spread a lot. Sure. I think it was in like Mike DeVries had a book at some point I read when I was like very early in my career. And his argument towards this was that these realistic things can be rendered again and look exactly how they were before, where the outlines have to have a thicker outline to kind of cover it. So, yeah, I think these can basically be like, as the, the body starts to scatter the particles of ink, you can kind of like put them back where they're supposed to be again. But when we've got black lines that have spread, the new line to cover that has to be thicker than it was before. I but think this I is know. all really, uh, this is your important sort of concepts to keep in mind as we're, as we're yeah, working. Yeah, because they tend to they're living, aren't they? they? They move. Like the body doesn't care if this ink's in the right place. Mm -hmm. it, it either doesn't care or it does care and doesn't want it there. Like that's the the two choices. It doesn't like be like, oh, let's keep care of this and make sure it's right. Like it either doesn't yeah. care or doesn't want it. So we're kind of fighting it with that. But like they are physical particles, aren't they? It's the same as paint. You're taking physical material and you're placing it in an area kind of thing. So you can move it around a little bit more. It's like if you've got like a bag of black ball bearings, let's say, and you add enough white ball bearings into that bag, it would start to look more and more white. So you can do the same in the skin to a degree. That's why I'm doing that experiment with a cover-up by adding more and more white. Like each one, each time I stab white into there, there's little particles of white going in there and mixing with the particles of black kind of thing. And we eventually probably will be able to get it to go as white as any like fresh tattoo would have been, I think. But this is the right. experiment, isn't it? Right. And, and uh, you know, I think that it's... Uh it's over time they're going to they're going to change right the body's going to change the photochemistry it's going to change what it is and uh you know whether i don't know if 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 you put in a lot of black initially you could always like we've talked about like you've been like you've been telling us you know like you can always give it another pass of black and make it darker again and these sorts of things so um it's a process probably like lifelong one thing with them um, with regards to how the age and spread and stuff one thing that I think is quite funny and I don't think a lot of people think about is like the traditional style um, tattoos when they're using really thick lines, they're modeling them after tattoos that were done like 50 years ago or so. And they're doing like, they're doing lines with 18 round liners um, to match tattoos that were probably done with threes. They've just been, they were done with threes yeah. and they spread that much that now they look like 18. So they're doing them with 18s and they're going to spread the same amount. <laughs> So, like, in another, like, 20 years, they're going to be, like, even thicker. And then other people from that time are going to be like, right, we've got to use 60 uh, round liners now to match the, like, old school style. It's like, they might be best off doing with threes again, so the, uh, so they age well, but they don't look as good done with threes, do they? They look cool with the fat lines on, so. Amazing. Um, we got a question in the chat from Tattoo Now. Uh, Tattoo Now asks... Uh, does he want to chat, uh, chat about mentoring or apprenticing? Um, so, uh, I know that you have a few images on your, on your Instagram page from your apprentice. Um, would you mind talk to us about that experience? Like being a mentor? And... Um, I don't have an apprentice now. Okay. Um, 
she's kind of moved on. Like all all good, you know, like everything's good, still friends and all that kind of thing. Good. I don't know if I would want to do it again or not. Ah. Um it's like it's like its own project, you know? Yeah. And if the apprentice is not like entirely in alignment with your like way, then it's kind of like a it's harsh to say a waste of energy almost. I don't want to exactly mean a waste of energy though. I don't know the exact word to use. It's like it's taken like a, a portion of my brain to have to like keep this in mind and have to help someone else do their work where I could do with that portion back. So like I think with this, we were both best off like not doing it anymore. But she's still tattooing. She works at uh, Sunderland now. Well, I think that it's. Uh, um... I think that it's important, you know, that you uh, that you recognize, you know, what you want, what you want to get out of your own career, and what you want to, you know, what you want to do. Who knows? Maybe you'll well, end up uh, apprenticing others in the future. But uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. But this, but, like I always said, I didn't want to do it. And then my mm -hmm. first apprentice, Michelle, she's called Michelle Madison. Um, she came to get a tattoo from me, and her mom was in the day before and her mom was like, will you look at her work and tell me some, uh, see if you can help kind of thing. I remember saying like, I'll look at it, but I promise to be honest, even if that's uncomfortable. Like yeah. it, I'm, I may be like harsh. I may be a little bit brutal with my, um, critique or whatever. So she has to take whatever I want to dish out kind of thing. And the mom's like, Oh yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want anything else. Cause they're like, we think we go, but we know we might be biased. <laughs> so I'm like, um, okay. Then she came and I looked at her work and I'm like, it's good. Like I like it. You know, I like the patents. I like the the lines. Very easy to make into tattooing. I'm like, how come you're not doing it already? And she said, Well, I went for an interview at a studio, and they said that I didn't have the right look. So I always said I wouldn't want an apprentice. You know, I wouldn't want to have to think about someone else. And she said, she went to this studio. They loved their work. Then when she went there, she turned up, and they were like, Now you've not got the right look. And I think what they wanted was some like slutty girl who they could like take advantage of, and she doesn't look like that. She's like a normal person, you know. Um, so they oh, turned it down based off what she looked like, and I was so offended by that. Like on on her behalf, I'm like, how dare they? And it's like, I'm like, I can't help you with this because I don't want to take on an apprentice. But like, you need to do this. You have to prove them wrong now about this. Mm. And it's like for a few days, I was thinking about, it, and I was telling everyone, and I'm like, I'm outraged by a kind of thing. Then at some point, I don't know what happened. It clicked in my head. I'm like, right, fuck this. I'm gonna help. I'm like, right, come here, and I'll do it with you. So then it's like with her. I was very like harsh and I, I'm like making to do a tattoo or something. And I'm like, um, I'll come in and be like, that line's not very good. Do this, color this bit in, do this. And it's like, I'm making her tattoo better than I can because she, I, I can be lazy and not finish like the blend or I can have a little bit. That's a little bit patchy. And I'll be like, Oh, that's, that's enough for today. But she's not allowed to do that. She has to do it exactly what I tell her. I wouldn't let anything leave. That wasn't perfect. You know? But I would say, like, like, if she were to do this tattoo that you've got on the screen there, hers would definitely be better than that, because I can see a lot of patchy bits on that that I wouldn't have let her leave with, you know? And I, and you can you can create some someone to be better than you, you know? Like, you can make a rudimentary lathe, for instance, out of, like, bits of wood and string that could make more accurate pieces of wood to make a better lathe out of. And that one can make a better one. You can make machines that make better machines kind of thing, you know? And it's the same with teaching like this. I can teach someone to be better than I am. So what it was like with her was I would tell her to do something. Like, say, I give her homework. Like, I remember, like, she was doing just the, the phone and tidying up and doing all this kind of studio stuff for, for a while, maybe five or six months. And then one day I'm like, Michelle, I'm, like, getting ready for my, like, tattoo, and I'm looking at the computer. I'm like, Michelle, draw a stapler and make it look like a tattoo. And she's like, a stapler? I'm like, yes. Then I'm back to doing my work. She's like, okay. Then the next day she came in with a stapler drawing, and I'm like, I like that. I like how you've done this bit on the lines. Try and add shadows here to match them shadows you've done on there. Then it's like the next day that's finished. So I'm like, okay, draw a teapot. Like as if it was going to be a tattoo. Then she did that. Then I'm like, okay, I like that. Draw like a lady as if that was going to be a tattoo. And she did that next day. It was always next day. Then the th on the fourth day of that, like it was just always finished. I'm like, right, we need to go and get some pig skin and we're going to do a tattoo. So we did a tattoo. I posted that. People are like interested. We got a, someone in the next week to do a tattoo on. And she did that one. And she did it decent. You know, there's still things to be fixed. But I did. I chose a rose instead of like um, a name or something. Something where 
if she does wobbly lines, they can be fixed later on. If the blend's not uh, perfect, she can fix it later on. Whereas if it was like a little name or some weird title I didn't want to do, there's not much room to fix it. So I was thinking, ideally, she can fix them all and have never done a bad tattoo in her whole career. Um, but she would just do what I said every time. And I do this and she would do it. And then do this, she would just do it. So for me, it was like, I'm doing my tattoo and trying to create something. Then I'm going into her room and saying, oh, add this color into there. And she would do it. So it's like, it's like I get to create twice in the same day, you know, because like she's doing what I want her to do in a style that I like kind of thing. And it was like, it was fun. It was like really productive. And then I've had some apprentices where I'd say, do this as homework. And then it's like two weeks later, I'm like, where's that homework at? And it's like, oh, I'm working on this commission first, and then I'll do it. I'm like, well, okay. And I'm not getting that inspiration to tell them the next thing. So I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. And it's like a month later, I get inspiration to tell them to do another thing. Where if it's done straight away, I get the inspiration to do it straight away. So it's like, I think if you find the right person, maybe, but I don't know. I don't want to have to think about someone else either. I never did want to. And it's like I helped Michelle because, like, I felt that was, like, a thing I should do. And then another one of my uh, apprentices, Corey, like, um, Corey, sorry, her work was, like, not very good. She was, like, doing drawings. You could see that she was uh, wanting to do it. But I was getting her in as a receptionist only. I said, there's no apprenticeship here for you kind of thing, just so you know that. And she was like, that's okay. But then eventually she helped me with a lot of things, and I'm like – do this to, to this rose that you've drawn. And then it's like the next day she came and it was done again. And I'm like, okay, do this. And it's like, draw 20 times. And she came back with 20 drawn. And I'm like, okay. And she was doing the same as Michelle. So like we took her through the apprenticeship again. Like it's like the ones when I don't want to do it seem to be the ones that <laughs> work. And when I'm trying to take an apprentice on for that apprentice sake, it doesn't really pan out, I guess. Well, I, I guess it's, uh, it's different. You know, apprenticing somebody, that relationship's different than like a classroom. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you would have with uh, with teachers in a classroom. That sort of a that sort of a thing. Um, but it is an interesting thing. Like, uh, who teaches the teachers? You know what I mean? That's uh, uh, especially especially in this particular sort of uh, uh, instance with with tattoo apprenticeships and, and the like. It's um, it is very uh, there's a uniqueness to it. You know, and especially like our language around it, you know. Uh, Can we it, take that picture cool. off there? I don't like that one being on show right now. Gotcha. <laughs> I may even delete that one from my Instagram now. Huh. <laughs> How about this painting? Oh, wow. That's some street art, like graffiti stuff I did. Straight ass. Is that what you just said? <laughs> Nonsense. Yeah. It's. Well, I think that's we're all we're all like uh, you know going to be our own worst critic, as it were. But, right. uh, yeah, it's like nice. just like I went spray painting with like a friend, and uh -huh. I'm like, I, I just wanted to see what I could achieve. He wanted to see what I could achieve. The annoying thing about uh, graffiti like that, or street art, it probably cost me about two hundred and fifty pounds in spray paint, just to get all the different colors and tones and stuff like that. And it's like, it's like very expensive medium to go and like play with. Right. But, you know, I guess it's it would be, uh, you know, finding that that rhythm to be able to bring out like what you know about painting, about what you know about like making images, as it were. Right. Whether it's a painting yeah. or a tattoo. Uh, it was it's fun. A it's a fun, ex uh, fun experience. Yeah. Of awesome. No, a I lot think of work. Yeah. Respect. Respect. Um, well, any other tattoos? Anybody want to. Uh, Want to check out? Like, here's some. All right, so here's some black and gray. You did this black and gray, right? Yeah. Do you work from from bottom to top? Like, do you when you do your realism or um, I, I don't think this would be necessarily realism, but but like when you were doing that lotus blossom that we saw, do you work from like a Xerox machine, like from bottom all the way up, or do you kind of dance around the piece? No, I'm, I move all over the place. It's probably like uh, if if I can see the customer struggling, then can we take this one off? Also, this is not <laughs> okay. <laughs> you tell um, me where you tell me where you want to go. How uh, about this, Christian? You zoomed in right now. Can you zoom out? Yep. Yeah, I, I like move around a lot when I'm working to like do where whatever color I've got now. I want to put that wherever it goes, kind of thing. Uh, most of the time. 
rather than like I've, I've tried doing that like um xerox machine thing that you see and it, it works and it probably hurts less for the client but i want to see where things are going like sometimes if i'm doing a portrait like this one for instance like i i don't think i've nailed the eyes but it was getting very stressful to get all of these like subtle tones and stuff like that in this is another reason why i don't really love doing like realistic style stuff it's because it like it it kind of has to look shit for six hours and then there's like 30 oh. minutes of fun at the end so it's and like once, it you get the eyes, once you get the eyes in you can at least like back to the be like it's going to have some likeness and then it's like that but like it's it's yeah I, I find it boring to like that it has to look really bad for ages whereas i think when you do like say something like with outlines at least you've got the shape in the outlines are there and, and you can start to see it taking shape already do you use um when you do black and gray do you use um uh, opaque grays or do you uh dilute your no black? i use i use um like like a mix i'll mix down like um that you can put that skull in the middle if you want there you go <laughs> you can okay, have that one right. up. <laughs> um i would mix down like i'll have like three pots or five pots maybe three no the one next to that was me better one okay. that's when i did on my brother years ago this one. one in the middle yeah yeah got it that one i can see some of the smooth blends and stuff like that i can see what i've achieved there i'm quite happy with that one yeah, I mix. I'm, I'll have like one pot of solid black, which will be like a lining black. Then I'll have one uh, pot solid of uh, like a black black, like what do you call it? Like fusion power black or something like that. And a friend of mine, Brent McCowan, he's tattooed for as, at least as long as I've been alive. And they used to have to make their own inks like then. And when I started me, my apprenticeship, I used to have to mix my tattoo artist eggs. Yeah. And make his needles. Right. Nice. It's a lost art now, right? But Brent, explain to me, like, the difference in um, the lining and, like, color black kind of thing is that, like, if you imagine marbles, you know, you've got mostly the small marbles and you've got the big marble. It's like the lining black is made out of small marbles. And the pack and black is made out of the big marbles. And then white would be the equivalent of a tennis ball kind of thing. And um, that's why white hurts more to put in, he says, at least. Because white's titanium dioxide, basically. I think that's the, the only white that's safe to go in the skin. And it's like, it costs so much more to get it ground to like the finer like size. So, I'll so have that's the, why the it's one... so hard to get white in the skin. That's what he reckoned. I, I, I'm not saying that that's definitely the truth. That's just the information that allegedly... Mm -hmm. I was told. So I like to have the line and black for doing my lines, and then the power black for doing the the black and the blends because I don't want to line with the power black because I think in years to come that's going to spread more because they're bigger particles. Or would they maybe spread less? I don't know. This is an experiment. I think when I've when I've lined with that though, them's the ones that you know when you get hot and your lines start to like raise up. I think that tends to be when they're like they've used like the power black and dynamic black's really bad for that. So you have one full line of black, one full um, power black. I maybe have two or three of those lined up behind each other if it's going to be a heavy black session. Then I'll have one that's like topped up the top of the pot but not trimmed. And then I'll fill it to, to you know, the skin that it gets on with um, gin. Then I'll have one that's maybe half full itch yeah. and then full of gin. And one with like a couple of drops at the bottom filled with gin. Yeah. And again, like uh, I'll show you. I've got some right there. When you say gin, what do you mean gin? I'm gonna I'm gonna assume it's like you know it because gin. of the alcohol content. Yeah, the cheapest gin, gin you can get. Like what one. actual <laughs> gin? Actual gin, yeah, because get it's like the heck out of here. What what tends to happen is when you're using distilled water. Like, because if you use regular water in your pot, eventually it can go bad and you can get like problems with it, you know? If you use distilled water, it can last for a lot longer. But what I discovered was happening and what Brent again explained to me was um, with just water, the particles are heavier than the water. So they tend to settle to the bottom. There's a guy who I like was tattooed when I first ever started. He used to put the same gray wash out at the start of the session. And he would go through all of his black, all of his gray wash, 
then at the end of the session he'd use the the pot that had just sat all day to use that as his light gray because the particles had settled to the bottom so it's something about the alcohol in the gin it keeps it moving around or or, or at least it's like a thicker solution so it's not settling because it's everything suspended at the same like rate um so that I, I tend to find makes way better mix that lasts the same as long like if, if i just put a drop of that in by the end of the day it's actually mixed throughout solution whereas if i put it like i say a drop in just water it would settle so i've used gin for a long time now and my black and gray got a lot better after i started using that um and have you heard of a guy called remis mine. have you heard remis remis shizowskis his name is he's from lithuania he was what? told the same information as me by Brent at the same time, same tattoo convention. And Remus's work got better. He was already phenomenal anyway, but he's got better even from using the gin. I think he still does also. Oh. I've told so many people about it though, and no one wants to listen. Like people are just like, gin, <laughs> come on. And then people think I'm joking. There was one customer who was a tattooist. And one day, like I told them a few times about this gin thing. And then one day um, it, it was empty. So, I topped it up with gin and they're like, hang on, you actually use gin? And I'm like, yeah, I've told you this. They're like, I thought you were taking yeah. this. No. So I've told so many people about it and no one's actually listened that I'm like, I was considering making like my own product line called Thanditon's Juice that was just going to be gin in the bottle. And I'm like, I had this whole ethical dilemma of can I just repackage gin and sell it as this? Because people would buy it if it was 16 quid for an ounce on a, on a tattoo supplier. But they won't just go and no, buy I'm gin. I'm going to the liquor store next door and getting a bottle of gin today. Try it. <laughs> Don't drink it, though. It's bad for you. No, that <laughs> I drink Tanqueray. So I like, uh, you know, uh, just as a, you know, just as like a technical appreciation. I really like the, you know, the imperfections. No, I, I, I think that this is really, this is really beautiful. The, the. The marks, like we were, we've been talking about today. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the imperfections. Yeah. I like, I like to add them to it. It looks better with with these imperfections. Mm -hmm. It's it's like seeing uh, um, cross hatching, if you if you mm -hmm. like, or all oh, right, you mean the, like the needle marks? Of course, yeah, the needle mark. Oh, yeah, there's little there's little, little bits and stuff, stuff in here, but then there's yeah. also just this sort of movement of your needle. It's very consistent, and it goes across the form. Uh, and so, I guess I think about like uh, you know like printing money for instance right when you look at when you look at the way that that money uh is rendered right images on images on money and stuff is rendered it has this beautiful cross hatching that's going on and mm -hmm. uh yeah we can see we can see all that here and i think you know the more that we look we could probably it just it just feels like volume across the form so there's a there's a mm -hmm. bit of extra effort that you're putting in and uh and I think that it's it's appreciated. Mm -hmm. Even if you go back, you know, you take a take a longer view, you know, it's like, and you don't see it as prevalently. It's still it still registers, I believe. So, yeah, I think it's there's a lot there's a lot we could go on and on about this one. It's really it is really well done. Did you use round mags uh, to render the like the forehead or? Yeah, or do you I, use I always flat? use like curved no i rarely use flat ones i use flat ones when i've run out of curved ones basically <laughs> <laughs> and the, the reason for that um have i got any paper well the reason for that is like um even if you stretch the skin perfectly when you make an indent in the skin it's got to go like that hasn't it like it's never going perfectly down like this and it's never staying perfectly flat so if you want all the needles to go in the same depth you need the right amount of curve on the needle and you need the right amount of stretch to make that curve match so i always use round mags and i prefer the needles by cheyenne even though they're probably the most expensive like i've tried so many different needles like i used to love uh, ordering my own needles from china from um i had a specific guy i was talking to and he'd make them exactly how i wanted um that you would use with the you know the old grips and then i started using the cartridges and it's like, I don't think the needles are as good as the custom ones, but the ease of switching between them is like, I, like I hated that 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 um, fork in the road happened because like I, I loved these custom needles and I love like the, the, 
like the meditation, I guess, of like setting everything up and making sure they're all bent in the right way before the start of a tattoo. And I love the way that they worked. But I'd have like five machines set up to switch between needles. And yeah. I also love how fast these ones are to switch. So it's like I had to make a choice. Like we all had to make a choice at some point, didn't we, with with that. And I, I kind of miss that. But the switching between needles is just like so much like easier, isn't it? That it's like they had to win, I guess. So then it's really difficult to find needles I like. But the Cheyenne ones, they work exactly as expected kind of thing. They're not all perfect. Occasionally, like, they're less than I used to. Sometimes I'd throw, like, three away per box or something like that. Now it's not so much like that. Still take them apart to bend the needles how I want. But um, I've, I've noticed with other cartridge cartridges, they don't go in the same. And I had a company called Jaconley uh, ask if they could sponsor me. And I'm like, first of all, what kind of name is Jaconley, by the way? <laughs> and I said, like, I, I, I don't like them. I have some feedback if you're interested in that. And they're like, yeah, send the feedback. But they didn't care. They're just a Chinese company that doesn't care. But like, what I think it is, what makes these like the cheaper needles or even some of the ones that are expensive but don't tattoo as good, I think it's the rubber in there. Because, you know, you've got like your, your push rod inside of the machine that's pushing the needle. Then you the rod in the needle to touch the actual needle, like the cartridge. And like it pushes out. Then you want the rubber to pull it back at the same rate as this. If the rubber's too weak, I think what happens is you get like this kind of thing. If it's yeah. like the rubber's not pulling back fast enough, the machine's coming back before there. Then this is only to here before it hits it again, and it's like it's going to be really inconsistent. There's always going to be this little click or this little gap, and it's not, it's not. It's supposed to be stuck to each other perfectly. So then I think you need the tighter rubber. And I think that's where they go wrong on the on the the other needles. The rubber's not like tight enough, so it's not pulling the needle back in in line. So you get like a discrepancy, and like sometimes it's bouncing, sometimes it's pushing it perfectly, sometimes it's not. And I just find them really difficult to use because mm -hmm. yeah. it's like it's like a frequency, isn't it? You want the frequency to be exact, and you turn you turn the volume up, you adjust your the volume the um the power you turn the power up or down you adjust the stretch tighter or looser to have the frequency be in line with like the elasticity of their skin to make it go in perfectly there's a lot of like moving parts if one of them parts is off it doesn't happen right you know tattooing with rotary pen style is very different than tattooing with coils it they're Oh, absolutely. Very, very, very well, different. I think that, that was another divide i guess wasn't it like it's at some point it was like rotaries are coils and it's like on, on each of those kind of paths, it's like, um, do you choose um, cartridges mm -hmm. or or the regular needles or whatever? Mm -hmm. Can I, I genuinely think that coils with the original needle set up tattoos better than anything? But again, the weight of coils is horrible, and uh, I like having wrists that I can use. <laughs> so yeah, it's not fun what? trying to tattoo with a six ounce vibrating brick. Yeah, <laughs> there's certainly a cost benefit yeah. analysis you have to go through, you know, to make sure. And then they get hot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Make, you know, I used to have one machine that used to burn my finger there, like just because it was so hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or they yeah. work perfectly for one tattoo. You set it down gently, give it its clean, go to do the next tattoo with it, and it's all out of tune. And I'm like, all I did was set you down. What happened? I think there's something cool about that though. Right. Like if they weren't so heavy, yeah. I would I would be using them still. Cause I think it's like an old like I've got a bike now, a Harley. I've got an old Harley. And it's a carb model. And it's like it was working last time I rode it, but I don't know if it's gonna do next time. I I will. <laughs> and if it's not, I I know <laughs> what to do. I know what to adjust to get it to work. But it's if awesome. it's like an electric thing and it's got like a brain <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm not good if it breaks, you know? Like, I have to take it to a guy to get them to fix it. Like, that's kind of where rotaries are, aren't they? Mm. Like, the old machines are like the carb model. It's just engineering. That's it. It's not like electro-engineering kind of thing. Yeah, well, I, I, heard, definitely uh, I heard another use my, um, uh, I was just going to say, ahead, but I definitely you. still use my, uh, my traditional tattoo machine for lining. And it's, I, 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 I was using rotary for a good bit. Um, and then once I went switch back over to lining, like I'm, I'm never going to go back. And I will say fuck sticks has really good cartridge needles, but I, I, I can't go back. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like, it's like butter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially when, 
you know, you, you, you have a line out the door and so many people want tattoos. Break out that old spark and get next. You know what I mean? There's nothing beats. Well, it's like the there's like a vibration, isn't there? Like when you because there's when you're tattooing the skin, there's also like resistance there, which just comes back through the, the machine to a degree. And the big heavy mm -hmm. brass machine, like that takes that almost negates that completely. So I think that's another reason why they make such good lines. Yeah. They're so heavy though. No, it's <laughs> you're you're right. But I mean I think there's a you know, I heard this point the other day that uh that what has happened is the you know, uh, there's so much innovation in the field that, and there's so much like the falling of the gates as you were, you know what I mean? There's no, you know, this gatekeeping is sort of has been diminished that tattooing as a craft has been lost and turned into an industry. Like this is the sort of, this is the, the, I, I guess, uh, you know, it's, it's not about trying to go back to, you know, this sort of, uh, uh, fantasy of it being some kind of craft, but rather like, like you said, being able to use the, the 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 best parts, right? The best parts of both worlds, right? The older mm -hmm. stuff, the new stuff. Being able to sort of bring that together, that's probably going to be uh, where everyone can find expression, where everyone can find uh, their voice, as it were. And so, um, this has been this has been a really incredible uh, conversation. Thanks. Want to say thank you so much for. For your time and for coming on um again uh we want to say thanks to guy atchison for being the founder and for being the inspiration behind reinventing the tattoo thanks guy um and then also want to thank gabe ripley thank you gabe for uh for everything you're doing uh behind the scenes uh you could check out tattoo now technology for tattooers um Gabe, we'll get you hooked up. Um, I uh I just want to like go around the you know around the circle here if everybody could just give us a quick sign off and let us know where we can find you. Spirit is so great to see you again, man. I hope you're doing well. I've been checking out your your tattoos, your your TikTok, been putting out putting out awesome, awesome work, man. So where can we where can we find you, Spirit? Thank you. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much for, uh, you know, doing this show. Thank you to uh, Gabe Ripley and Guy Atchison. Um, this show has been just very vital. I just sometimes I just like tuning in just to hear you guys talk about art. Um, it's been uh, it's just been a really, really a great. I gave you a follow. Thanks. I would like to thank you for coming on and sharing your expertise. It's been really insightful. Um, you know, keep keep doing ugh, just keep doing that. Great. I'm just sitting here at your work man it's just it's just so beautiful i appreciate um i just really appreciate you and and what it is that you do and um just and also just to say i i, I agree with you I, i've actually gone from a place of i, I am i want to be really a really good tattoo artist but i i don't think i'm gonna try to be the best anymore i'm just i i i don't know if you kind of look at my tattoos like the basics you know i'm just kind of doing i'm just doing what my clients want you know, I'm not really trying to do too much razzle dazzle anymore. I'm just, I want to do good, solid tattoos to stand the test of time, and 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 that's it. Um, and so that might be, uh, and it's it's been a lot, it's been a lot of fun uh, lately. So that's that's kind of what you've been seeing a lot of, James. But anyway, if anybody wants to check me out, uh, I am tattoos by spirit on Instagram, tattoos by spirit on TikTok, tattoos by spirit .com. Yeah, thank you, spirit. Uh, yeah, check out spirit's work. Um, and again, I, I think that it's a, it's, it's this process, you know what I mean? And probably trying to, you know, trying to find it is not going to work instead. Like you're, you are like actually helping others and it's through that, like through that action that you, you will find, you know, you're going to find the, the voice that's, that's inside. Anyway, love it. Uh, Amber, well, where can you find you fun, Whoever has the most fun doing it wins. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Who, awesome. If you have the most fun, you do more tattoos, and then they get better anyway. So that's yeah. basically mm. the point of my art career in general is to just enjoy the art. Because oh, most yeah, of the art is, oh my god, I got to get this out of my head. Enjoy, and then enjoy once you're on canvas <laughs> with paper, I'm like, thank God that's out of my head and on paper now. Love it. <laughs> No wonder um, I was going so crazy. 
<laughs> Amber, it's been so wonderful getting a chance to see you as well. Uh, it's been a long time no see. Um, where can we find you at? You can find me everywhere under Amber Morgan. All the social media sites all over the internet. If you Google Amber Morgan, I'm what you get. Amazing. Yeah, the, the original, the one and only. The one and yeah. only. I love it. Um, well, anyway, I want to thank our special guest. Thanks. Um, and you were really generous. Tell us about your story. Uh, just as a quick recap, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> Melanie Phillips, right? You can look up that story. There's a, like some amazing shit about that. Um, so uh, it did go viral. And it is, uh, you know, so it is really, uh, it's really humorous, but also I think, uh, you know, important, uh, important things you did. Again, your cartoon, Shed. It's, my it's beautiful. It's a beautiful cartoon. I can't wait to, oh, to see look at that the next episodes. So really good luck on that. Um, and then, yeah, just like get a chance to, to pick your brain, see your work. Uh, it was it really was um, just a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm going to put up your, uh, you know, I made some QR codes for you. But if you want to, there's anything you want to plug. Um, I don't know if there's anything I want to plug. Wait, you're gonna to have to wait for the next episode of Shed Cartoon because that's gonna take a while anyway. I have a violin concert next weekend that I'm performing at. I'm doing a one minute song, <laughs> something like that. I'm, I've been learning violin for the last couple of months, and we've got like a um, it's like a school near me. We're doing like a little show, so I've got to perform in that. Um, so if you want to travel to England to watch me play a one 30 second song. <laughs> <laughs> saying see him no, no, there's nothing really, really really pushing or anything at the moment so all good there, no thank you but there's an I'm amazing piece cartoon. of work what's that go ahead shared cartoon mushrooms shared cartoon mushrooms episode on youtube and you'll find it yes i think it's shared cartoon official on you on instagram but it's not really mega up to date no, i love that um yeah there is an there's an amazing uh composition of music called uh, uh i think it's three minutes and 44 seconds something like it's by john john cage where it's you know it's like you, the performer just stands there silently that would be the that would be my piece <laughs> that would be my <laughs> musical uh sort of contribution but <laughs> thank you so much uh really uh so much um so much to think about as well so um i think i'll you know i'll definitely go back watch this episode and 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 revisit some of the concepts because sort of in the middle of all of our, you know, really lively conversation, we really touched on some important ideas about tattooing and art, technical stuff, things that we're interested in. And, you know, uh, just so many, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a very, very rich sort of uh, experience. So, well, I want to say thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you out there for watching. If you're still here, make sure to hit like and subscribe, of course. Um, helps out the algorithm. I think you're supposed to say smash that like button. Yeah, do that. Just yeah, <laughs> smash it. You didn't start with, it's your boy. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's your boy. Thanks, Bandit. <laughs> we're, we're like, yeah, it's like, it's a little more subtle, but uh, but <laughs> we still, we all, we're all. We need a the YouTube intro in it. That's it. Oh, yeah, we're all we're all subject to the it's the same it's the same economy here, you know what I mean? But but we love it, uh and we've got like hardcore, you know, audience that, that watches this. It's it amazes me. But again, I, I think it wouldn't be the same without everybody that contributes, and so I'm I'm grateful to everybody. Oh, I else. should plug that actually. Like me and my last apprentice, Sophie, we did a podcast for a while. It's called um What's it called? It may be just under a tattoo podcast, which wasn't ideal. Then we went under the the best the best tattoo podcast ever, or something like that. I can't remember now. Amazing. I don't know what the link is to it, but like some of them were good. Like they're funny, you know. It's not just like talking art nerd stuff. Mm -hmm. we, well, or master and the noob. If you write master and the noob, that was the one that probably would pop it up. <laughs> no, I. Uh, it's uh, we can find it on your Instagram. Uh, there's there's definitely some images and. Uh, uh, Me series three at some point even though she's already left like she's still up for doing it but yeah we'll keep doing well, I think it they're worth you know. a watch because there is some like there's some inf inf information and there's some funny bits you know like because i like the funny parts like yeah um 
no, uh, love it. And so, yeah, check out Thanks' his podcast, Thanks' his paintings, Thanks' his tattoos. Um, if you're ever, um, let's see, where is it? Uh, I know, ah, in Seaham. 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 Uh, could you pronounce it for us? Or let's <laughs> see him. See him. See him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Americans. You know what I mean? Durham. <laughs> uh, in Durham. Uh, Durham. Yes. See him in Durham. Yeah. In uh, in the UK. So uh, uh, Durham. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, yeah. No, thank you for the, thank you for helping me get it right. So you know, and to go over there and and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna be able to say where i'm at oh there's uh, a lot of people come there's like a there's a beach just like 200 meters that way kind of thing and a lot of american people seem to come over to collect sea glass because it's like um there used to be a glass factory down there and they used to just chuck all the glass into the sea when all the broken glass and stuff like that and then now it's been washing up on the sea for for years all rounded and stuff like this and we sea glass american is gorgeous but it's like there's hardly any of it left, so I don't know. <laughs> People are getting flights over to England or on the beach and like dig around for these things. But yes, I'll, well, I'll make you some things. There's you plenty on America. American beaches. I find it all the time. Oh really? I made some. I got a little uh, tumbler and I was putting some glass. I put some CMC in it, and then I'm tumbling. I'm like, I'm the guy who makes the sea glass, so I'm, I'm just going to restock it. Like <laughs> amazing. All right. Yes. Well, we're going to wrap it up uh, again. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, happy drawing. We'll see you next stream.